Coming up on this edition of Bearcat Student Media News, learn how SHSU students stay informed about safety on campus and how the warning system works. Also follow us as we take a trip down to the Texas Rodeo Cowboy Hall of Fame to welcome some old friends as new inductees. Live from the Dan Rather Communications Building on the campus of Sam Houston State University, this is Channel 7 News. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Justin Hardcastle. Welcome to Bearcat Student Media News. Last week, Bearcat juniors and seniors gathered in the Coliseum for the SHSU Ring Ceremony. The Ring Ceremony is a 20-year tradition and is one of the university's most unique. The rings are all gathered into boxes and spend the night before the ceremony inside Sam Houston's home. Here, they are guarded over by the university's ROTC cadets. The ring ceremony is considered to be the first part of graduation and moving on to greater things for students and can help graduating students begin to say goodbye to the college life. Known as one of the safest universities on Texas, Sam Houston State is always finding ways to inform its students of any danger. One way the university communicates to the students is through CatSafe. Bearcat Student Media's Anissa Beverly has more on how the program works and what students need to do to stay up to date. You get a notification and it's cat safe. Most students may swipe away the notification, but this program is one way the university is ensuring our safety while on campus. I spoke to Dr. Lonnie Booker Jr., Associate Director of Emergency Management to learn more about the program. Cat safe basically is emergency alert or communication for the campus and so um, when there is an emergency that information needs to be pushed out to all faculty staff and students CatSafe is the platform in which we use to do that. CatSafe is sent out through the marketing and communication department on campus yet Dr. Booker expressed he also has the authority to send out messages as well. One feature of the messages is timely warnings. Basically, a warning is just keeping you advised of, hey, something happened, mm -hmm. and we just need to, to be aware that something happened, and for you to be extra vigilant, be on the lookout, things of that nature. Dr. Booker would like students to adhere to his advice. Everyone has access to CatSafe. Mm -hmm. They can go in and put in their cell phone number or parents' number or another email or whatever the case may be. But take advantage of that because, and then anytime you receive a cat say for a message or a timely warning, read it, pay attention to it. On the campus of Sam Houston State, Anisha Beverly, Bearcat Student Media. In the United States, nearly half a million people ages 12 and up are sexually assaulted each year. As Bearcat Student Media's Ashlyn Anderson tells us, there are valuable resources available to you as a survivor of sexual assault. Every 73 seconds, someone in the United States is sexually assaulted. Title IX and Safe House are one of the multiple resources available in Walker County to those who've experienced sexual violence. Based on your, your sex and your gender, you cannot be discriminated against here at Sam Houston. That discrimination, though, can take many forms. And over the last really 10 years, that discrimination has been focused on sexual misconduct and sexual assault. Along with an investigation, Title IX has other resources available. Those could be um, absence notification, assistance with um, missed classwork, a no contact order maybe between you and the other person that's also involved in the incident, um, assistance in a potential housing reassignment, um, there's lots of different options, and we really try to sit down and talk to the person um, that has been a, a, a victim of um, and or also accused of to find out what services will best be, fit their needs. Title IX and Safe House work closely together to help survivors. We are the local nonprofit in town. We serve Walker County, San Jacinto County, Polk, and Trinity, and we are a resource for survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault. We provide different services to them, and we have shelter and stuff like that. So our majority of what we do is we are the nonprofit in town that serves domestic violence and sexual assault survivors. You may see on campus and around the community, we have a bunch of teal ribbons, and we usually put those up April 1st to kick off Sexual Assault Awareness Month. 
Prevention comes with change and change with awareness. I am Ashlyn Anderson, Bearcat Student Media. Like to read? A common reader event titled Deliberative Dialogue was held on April 7th. The event was held in the LSC facilities and students and faculty took part. Participants were given various world topics and each table discussed their opinions and came up with some resolutions. Some ground rules were set before the event such as no debating and no name calling. Tables were assigned a mediator who remained neutral and enforced these rules. I hope students find a way to talk to people they might disagree with, mm -hmm. to find nuance in uh, wicked problems, and to uh, find some common ground and shared values. Students could win scholarships at this event. They'll be evaluated on their critical thinking skills with winners being announced at the end of the week. The 1968 Sam Houston State University's men's and women's rodeo teams are now Hall of Famers. They're part of the Texas Rodeo Cowboys Hall of Fame's 2022 class of inductees. The teams were introduced in the Hall of Fame in the Fort Worth Stockyards National Historic District on April 9th. The Texas Rodeo Cowboy Hall of Fame is located in the Cowtown Coliseum in Fort Worth. The hall features more than 300 award plaques showcasing cowboys, cowgirls, animals, event personnel, and events. The 1968 National Intercollegiate Rodeo Association Finals were held in Sacramento, California and were coached by Sonny Sykes. The women's team won the title by 15 points and the men's team won their title by 127 points. Coming up, see how the SHSU dance students will test their skills on the dance floor as they prepare for an upcoming performance. I don't remember how it started. Oh Our back and forth. It always came back. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. The proud son of hardworking immigrant parents, Eric Rodas chose to serve his country. A father, a soldier, and now a college graduate. He proved that circumstances have nothing to do with your outcome. Since 1879, we've been helping students like Eric determine their future. Sam Houston State University, a great name in education. This could be any town in Texas. Friendly folk. Everyone knows everyone, including our doctor, when we have one. Out here, it's an hour drive just for a checkup. They say we're facing a shortage of doctors, and that's one thing our state can't afford. We're so deeply bound to our rural roots, it's hard to comprehend. That's why Sam Houston State University created its College of Osteopathic Medicine to meet the health care needs of our rural communities and all who call Texas home. Better health care in our small towns is better for everyone. A new generation of physicians for Texans from a medical school that understands our Texas roots. Sam Houston State University, a great name in medicine. With the spring semester coming to a close, many fine arts departments are preparing for their final shows of the school year. One of the last shows for the SHSU's Department of Dance is the biannual Dance Spectrum and Concerts. With only a few weeks until the concert, Bearcat Student Media's Julie La Julia Landry talks with one of the directors about the show. The Department of Dance's Dance Spectrum and Concert is an opportunity for dance majors to sharpen their skills in an environment that challenges them. The concert can include elements such as fog, haze, and strobe lighting. Visiting Assistant Professor of Dance, Francisco Graciano, is one of the directors of the upcoming concert. He shares how he was inspired by Baroque music for this semester's show. As it speaks to me uh, through movement and um, playing with musicality, um, and then through that I will look at how relationships start to evol evolve um, as uh, phrase material is given. Graciano and his dancers have been practicing three days a week, two hours at a time. 
With this being his first semester at Sam Houston, the director spent the first few practices getting to know the dancers to match them with the best part. While Graciano is a director of the show, he explains how he doesn't always have the final say in the way a piece will turn out. I often have a, a way that I want things um, executed initially, and then I like to remain open to seeing how the dancers um, uh, interpret that. So things could change based on you know, what's happening in the room and how dancers sort of take things in. The concert will take place on three different days in the dance theater located in the Gartner Performing Arts Center. The first concert will be taking place April 28th at 8 p.m. On Sam Houston State University's campus, Julia Landry, Bearcat Student Media. Part of the mission statement for the Academic Success Center here at SHSU reads as the ASCS quote, a premier student support center with the goal of providing indispensable success and resources for every Bearcat. Bearcat Student Media's Ashlyn Anderson tells us more about what the center provides. The Academic Success Center, known as the ASC, located in the Newton Gresham Library, is a great resource offered on campus to aid students academically. Dr. Breen and Austin Dixon informed me on what the ASC offers to students. So the ASC is kind of a one-stop shop for academic resources for students. So we have tutoring in writing and math, our two main areas where students come in. But we also have tutoring in world languages and cultures. So we have sign language, German, French, Spanish, and lots of STEM tutoring. Chemistry, biology are very important, are very popular. And then we also have our first year experience course, the University 1101 class, an integrated reading and writing course for students who are not college ready yet. Peer mentors are available to give students extra support academically and personally. So students can make appointments in a range of ways. So a student can call our front desk and one of our ambassadors can either walk them through the appointment making process or they can take the information and make an appointment for them. Students can also go online through Campus Connect and select to uh, connect to a certain resource or a certain service that we offer and make an appointment there. And then students can also uh, come in person. In the case there is not a tutor or mentor available for a walk-in, an appointment can be made with the front desk ambassadors. So at the Academic Success Center, we meet students where they are to empower them to academic success. I am Ashlyn Anderson, Bearcat Student Media. Two years ago, SHSU, as, rel as well as the rest of the world, held their breath as the pandemic began to take its toll on the population. Many put their lives on hold. For some, the pandemic changed their lives forever. But a still, some still await a sign that the pandemic's wrapping up. Bearcat Student Media's Eric Cater has the latest from an email sent by Dr. Drew Miller and got a reaction from one of SHSU students on how he sees the pandemic today. Two years ago, the coronavirus set most of the world into a panic. SHSE responded by implementing mask mandates, rapid testing, and other resources for students. Dr. Drew Miller and the Student Health Center are still working hard to keep students and staff safe. In a recent email by Dr. Miller, he talked about relaxing many safeguards as well as continuing to keep testing and other resources available to students. With help from the CARES Act, the Health Center continues to run rapid testing, providing masks and mentions the vaccine is available and highly recommends getting vaccinated. I like the fact that they started providing free tests for uh, the free test kits for students and staff because uh, I know like sometimes uh, ph pharmacies would be sold out or they would be really expensive so I think that makes me feel safe that I can go and just get a free test. I don't really feel unsafe right now when it comes to COVID. I feel like they've taken really good uh, safety measures for it and they obviously follow the CDC guidelines. So I think they're doing a good job uh, when it comes to that. SHSU student Osiel Oliveras says what most of us are feeling right now. How do you see COVID playing out the next year? I hope that it goes away. I mean, I see a lot of places are still like opening up and lifting all these, uh, you know, regulations that we had in place two years ago. So I think like compared to two years ago, we've come a long way. From the Republic and the campus of SHSU, I'm Eric Cater, Bearcat Student Media. Still ahead, Sam Houston State University's Orange Pride Dance Team shows us how they roll in Daytona Beach at the NDA Cheer and Dance Team Championship. 
and it's going to be a cold Thursday morning, but it'll be a warm, sunny day come afternoon. I'm forecaster Maya Caleb, and we'll have your full weather picture after the break. The black truck? Hey, Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. You want to see some photos of them that I took? I don't. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Buzz and overshared again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to call a car. That's a smart idea. So, yeah, I know. That's why I did it. Hey, you're going to get back to the top of the mountain. Does that mean I'm going to get back with Christina? No. Oh. No, no. If I could go back and change it all, I would. I would. I think I'm going to miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. So sorry. Maybe it's just a little moment. I could go back and change, it. Back and change it all. I could go back. I would. But I can't. Stands on the 15. Smith looking over center. It's caught. It's a touchdown. It's a touchdown. Good afternoon, Huntsville and Sam Houston State University students. I'm Maya Kayla with your local weather forecast. It's currently 77 degrees in Huntsville with cloudy skies throughout the day. The humidity is at 84%, winds at 5 miles per hour with feel like temperature at 77. Around the region, Centerville is at 78 degrees, Groveton now at 75 degrees, Livingston checks in at 76, College Station a bit warmer at 77, Conroe 78, and finally Hardin is 78 with rainy skies. Statewide in El Paso is 62 degrees and Lubbock 62, while Dallas checks in at 77 degrees and Brownsville with a warm 90. Around the nation is 67 degrees in New York, 67 in Chicago, a nice 78 down in Miami, Denver is 39 degrees, and LA is a bit warmer at 66. For tomorrow, we expect a high of 83 degrees in Huntsville. Sunrise is at 6.56 a.m. Expected to be sunny with partially cloudy skies throughout the day. Winds from the west at 11 miles per hour. Humidity will be 63%. The five-day forecast for Huntsville tomorrow. The high is 83 with a low of 57. Friday has a high of 83 with a low of 70. Saturday, a high of 89. Sunday with 92 with sunny skies. And Monday has a high of 82 with a low chance of um, rain and 24% chance of rain. That's it from the Bearcat Student Media Weather Center. I'm Maya Caleb. Have a great rest of your week. Back to you, Justin. All right, thanks for that weather update, Maya. It's springtime, which means warmer weather and more pollen. Bearcat Student Media's Evan Williams spoke to WTVM meteorologist Tyler Allender on why we can see unsettled weather in Texas in the spring. Flowers are blooming and pollen is in the air, which means it's springtime. Springtime is that transition between a winter and summer, and for where you are geographically in Texas, that can mean some really wild weather. I talked to WTVM meteorologist Tyler Allender to understand why springtime brings about such peculiar weather. Basically, what fuels that classic spring-like weather, whether it's just the warmer air, or it's the severe storms is kind of the difference between temperature. So the big differences across the state from cold air to warm air is, and where that clashes is often going to create that severe weather. One of those severe weather conditions, at least according to those with allergies, is pollen. You know, one of the main factors of pollen is the weather conditions. 
and pollen kind of thrives on the warmer temperatures. A lot of times too, you have those strong winds in the spring too, as you get those changing weather patterns, that transition time between winter and summer, right in the middle of spring with the two different air masses, that's gonna lead to your wind. Wind is caused by temperature differences. Pollen thrives on dry air, warm temperatures, and wind. So when you have all three of those prime ingredients, you're going to get a lot of pollen. Allender gave some great insight, but I couldn't let him go without asking why Texas weather in particular is so strange. Why in Texas is the weather just so bipolar? You know, basically when you have these fronts coming through, depending on how far they make it this time of year, that really uh, dictates a lot about what kind of extreme weather you're going to get. But again, because there's such a huge amount of real estate in Texas, you're going to see that variety. Temperature and wind direction will really not only determine the type of air mass that you see, warm versus cold or hot versus colder, but it's also going to drive the storm. So for instance, in Houston, you're kind of directed by the flow off the Gulf of Mexico a lot of time. Whereas maybe up toward the panhandle of Texas, you're going to be more likely to get that drier wind coming from the Northwest. With that wind coming off the Gulf of Mexico, a lot of times that too can really bring in the moisture that you need for extreme weather. And remember that the warmer air that you have coming off the Gulf of Mexico, warmer air can hold more water vapor, which in turn can lead to flooding and lots of severe storms. In Huntsville, Evan Williams, Bearcat Student Media. Well, we have good news and bad news for the Bearcats on the Diamond. I'm Bearcat Student Media sportscaster Zalika Nasser, and I'll have all your action from the baseball and softball fields coming up after the break. As a boy, Lorenzo Baeza's playground was the streets. When his grandfather suffered a heart attack, one nurse's act of kindness changed his life. Today, he is the first in his family to graduate college, and he's not done yet. He's on his way to becoming a doctor. Since 1879, we've been helping students like Lorenzo defy the odds. Sam Houston State University, a great name in education. Bearcats know how to tackle big challenges, as the ongoing pandemic has shown us. The campus community has gone to great lengths to slow the spread of COVID-19, but we're not there yet. Our best shot for returning to normal is getting Bearcats vaccinated. The vaccine is safe and effective for protecting people from COVID-19. For me, for you, for Bearcats, let's get back to normal. Bearcats know how to get things done, as the ongoing pandemic has shown us. The campus community has gone to great lengths to stop the spread of COVID-19, but we're not done yet. Our best shot for returning back to normal is getting more Bearcats vaccinated. The vaccine is safe and effective in stopping the spread of COVID-19. For me, for you, for Bearcats, let's return back to normal. The proud son of hardworking immigrant parents, Eric Rodas chose to serve his country. A father, a soldier, and now a college graduate. He proved that circumstances have nothing to do with your outcome. Since 1879, we've been helping students like Eric determine their future. Sam Houston State University, a great name in education. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Zulaika Nasser with your Bearcats Student Media Sports. Sam Houston Bearcats baseball had a tremendous weekend with a series sweep over the Abilene Christian Wildcats, with Saturday being an offensive barrage, scoring 21 runs, forcing the mercy rule, and ending the game in seven innings. Carlos Contreras continued his tremendous season with having four hits and bringing in four runs at the game. The Bearcats are now 19 and 13, with being fifth 
with being 10 and 5 in the conference. This Bearcat team looks to continue their winning ways when they face UTSA on Wednesday night at Don Sanders with first pitch set to be at 6.30 p.m. Sam Houston's softball Bearcats did not have a good weekend as they dropped the series 3-0 to Tarlington, getting swept by them. The Bearcats put up a fight the last game of the three-game series, but came up short, losing 15-10. The Bearcats are now sitting 4-11 the conference and 10-31 overall. The Bearcats look to their eight-game losing streak and get back on track as they take a short trip to Houston to face off against Houston Baptist with first pitch set at 5 p.m. As the season is coming to an end, the Lady Bearcats will try to make it to the softball tournament, which will be held here in Huntsville. A lot of excitement on the diamond in the upcoming weeks. I'm Zulaika Nasser, and that's a wrap on sports. Sam Houston State has won the Division I National Championship in dance. The Orange Pride is won the 2022 NDA Collegiate Career and Dance Team Performance Competition in Daytona Beach over the weekend. Team performance is always a crowd favorite in the division. Routines can be 2 minutes and 15 seconds or less and must contain 30 seconds of each genre, jazz, palm, and hip-hop. This category was created to show a team's versatility and strength overall. Congratulations to the Orange Pride. That'll do it for us this week at Bearcat Student Media News. I'm Justin Hardcastle, and we'll see you back here next week.